the moment when I um, realized that I couldn't wait the six months was when I came home and my bra was full of blood. It was oozing blood from the nipple. And it was very, very sore and painful. And I thought, I have to do something about this. The part that I had difficulty accepting was the transition from living person to corpse. That I'd seen a number of deaths, hospital deaths, home deaths, and there's a very wide variation in the amount of suffering and the amount of grotesqueness of a death. My feeling is that um, myself is a creation of my brain, um, that it's the brain's job to take incoming information and turn it into something uh, functional. I believe that when my brain stops, that self is no longer going to exist. And if there is anything else that exists, it's impersonal and not particularly interesting to me. At this point, I have no family. My sister was my last uh, surviving family member. But I do have friends that go back a long time. And yes, my best friend, um, we met when we were 13 and we're best friends ever thereafter. Um, she understood from the word go. There's a big difference between knowing in general that you're going to die and knowing exactly what you're going to die of and probably when. Uh, she said, I've been through that. And she said, I imagine you're going through that now. She said, it's just much more nuts and bolts, much more real um, when you know what is going to kill you. Um, you, you know with, a, with just more practical certainty that you're not immortal. You always knew that, but now you really know it. When I was growing up, I grew up in an extremely religious setting, um, and I've totally rejected the theology and that way of life. But there is one thing that many religions do, not, not just Catholicism, but um, the... The, the whole memento mori thing, remember that you're going to die. And m much of what they did was destructive. It was just trying to make children afraid of hell. But there was an emphasis on practicing, um, evaluating your life in terms of your mortality. Like if you were in a job and you were trying to think, should I stay with it? I don't really like it. Should I stay with it? and evaluate it in terms of, if I were gonna die next week, what would I think then? I, I did ask my doctor, and uh, my palliative care doctor, and she said, most typically, because you have it in the lungs, it's chest infection that kills you. Um, but now it's probably spread to the liver too. So um, I guess I, I never really dealt with adjusting to the realities of a brutal death. And I was open to using death with dignity to buy myself some insurance if I happened to be one of the unlucky ones. Because I think to myself, under that, in that case, I have an escape hatch. There's a way of escaping, say, the last horrible two weeks. Um, so I did apply for it and I did get it. And it, a friend, not a friend, but an acquaintance who had had, now deceased, but has had um, death with dignity, she said, it keeps you honest because, you know, you, she said she was hurting a lot. And she would get up in the morning and say, oh, God, this, it's not worth living when you feel this sick. She said, and a little voice would say, oh, really? Do you want to die today? Because you can. Call up the pharmacy. And you would have to say, well, all right, I don't want to die today. But if it gets a lot worse, I want to die. And that you just, it helps you to deal with it. It gives you the reality that you can escape this if you want. So be honest, is it that bad? If you're going to live, 
if you live today, that's because you've made a decision to live another day. You might as well make it worthwhile. And I feel that I do that now, that I question the quality of my life. And it's so far, it hasn't come close to time to go. You may have noticed we have beautiful hydrangeas out front. And when the sun hits them in the right way, they, I actually have an emotional response to them that's partly the knowledge that I'm never going to see them again, that this is my last summer. And I could be wrong about that, but I think that's the probability that this is my last summer. And my neighbor and I uh, have roamed the, the gardens in the area, and I've enjoyed them a great deal. I would have to say it's there's more enjoyment and deeper enjoyment, but there's also some sadness at, at saying goodbye to things. And on a more prosaic level, going through my clothes and saying, well, I need some new winter sweaters. Oops, no, I don't. Uh, no more buying in bulk. <laughs> that is a little hard to get used to. And oh, no more, I'm going to save that for a special occasion. You know, anything you have, use it up.